have uh, a lot of Japanese wood for sale out there, uh, mainly because that's all there is. Uh, guys call wanting uh, Belgian-made wood for their Belgian-made guns. I got to tell you guys, it's just not out there. I mean, you can search around on the internet and try to find some or do what you have to do, but it's going to be tough to find. About the only thing I've got and some other guys have out there are these Japanese stocks and forms. They're good. They're nice pieces of wood. They they uh, they fit really well. I really like their inletting. The shape of them and all is pretty much the same as um, a Belgium stock. You notice the checkering is a little different. The uh, Belgium guns uh, came to a point at the bottom, um, so they're a little bit. Uh, these are a little bit different. Um, I don't have a Belgium stock to show you. I'll put a picture in later. Yeah. Um, so. Anyway, that's uh, the story there. Now, on the uh, 12 gauge, uh, you'll notice that these uh, flutes running down through here don't run all the way to the end. Uh, the Japanese guys uh, did that to kind of beef this area up up in the front here. So um, it would weaken it if they cut the flutes on out, so they decided to uh, not run the flutes all the way to the end. So they look a little different there. Other than that, they fit pretty well. Now, when you get your new Japanese form, most of them will have this little stick in place. That is to hold the uh, barrel channel together and stop it from warping. Uh, so first thing you do is knock that out, get rid of that. If you try to fit it with that in there, you'll find that that's gonna be really difficult. Now, let's, um, let's see if we can slide on this form. Fairly new gun, very good shape. Let's see how the form goes on. So we slide it on. This one went right in there pretty well. What, what has to happen, there's a, a groove in your um, form here, I mean in your uh, receiver, um, and this uh, lip on this uh, form has to fit down into that groove. Now, what happens is these uh, Japanese forms have quite a bit of finish on them, and uh, they have too much finish on them, so they, won't, they don't want to go down in the, uh, the groove. But this one here went really pretty well. Now, it's not quite seated all the way in, but time you put the cap on this one really tighten it down it'll probably be good now if you get one that just won't go in take a uh, my favorite little file here it's a little bastard uh, file and carefully and I would do this in the vise I'm just doing this to show you here uh, take a little bit of that finish off of this lip now you like to say the easiest way is put the thing in a vise it's just a lot easier to handle but just for demonstration purpose here uh, uh, what you're doing taking that finish off of that that lip on the form so you want to get that finish off of there and it doesn't take much that's probably enough right there and this form is fitting really well anyway so when you put it on now it's even going on even better see so really not much to fit a form and that forms pretty much fit it's uh, it's done so uh, that's an extra form let's put that aside now fitting stock is a little more difficult a little more of a challenge this is a uh, new japanese stock brand new um what uh, what happens on the, the inletting is really great on these stocks i love them they fit so well the only problem they have and it's not a big deal when they finish this these stocks they don't do anything to protect the inletting, so you get this finish in all the inletting. Basically, what you have to do to fit these is just remove the, um, the finish. Now, you do that, and same thing, I use my little square coarse cutting file here. And what you do is you put it in, and without doing a lot of rocking, you want to keep this straight, you uh, start removing finish on this flat surface on the front, like so. And you're going to take that down, just get the finish off, but you want to keep this flat and square. Um, I've, um, I've got one here that I was fitting on earlier, just, uh, and I'm kind of there, I want to just show you. A few more things on this um but to speed things up i've been working on this stock a little bit another area that's really critical is um this um this area right here this is really critical that you get this finish out of uh, this area right in this curved area now the reason i say that 
because that acts like a wedge. If you don't get that finish out of there and it's bearing too tightly, and trust me, I'm speaking from experience, when you jam that stock up on the receiver, it'll crack your stock right through the side here. So it's real critical that you get this finish removed in that radius area. You've got to get that out of there. And uh, do that with the same little file, like so. Now, I also, while well, I've got it in the vise, and there again, you kind of need to get this in a padded vise. You just can't do this thing holding it in your hand. It's tough. Another thing I do is take my little file, and I kind of work on the sides of the uh, inletting here to clear some of that finish out of the inletting. In other words, I am... I'm clearing it out right in through here and I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to clear these sides right in here because there's a little finish buildup and you don't want that too tight or it can crack your stock when you put it on. Now, just uh, for demonstration purposes here, I've got a stock here that I've already put in. So I have removed a lot of uh, finish around this radius area here that's critical, very critical there. I've taken a lot of finish out of these uh, side tang areas here. Uh, and I have removed the finish down to the bare wood on these flat surfaces here. I kept them real square and flat. I didn't rock and roll around. I kept it flat. Now, now what you got to have is uh, some inletting black. It's messy stuff, but it's uh, something you got to have here. And you want to get some of this inletting black on your receiver. Now, this edge, right, this uh, part of this receiver, this tang right here, this actually is kind of a recoil plate. This kind of bears up inside the stock, and you kind of want, if you can, to get this surface here to bear up into the back of the stock. That kind of cuts down on recoil. So I'm going to put a little black them on there, and I'm going to put some inletting black up on these flat surfaces here, on the back, on top, and on these radius areas especially. Then I am simply going to uh, tamp this stock onto the uh, receiver. When you bump this stock on there, you gotta do it with a little vigor. You don't ever want to hit your stock on the toe because it will break. Now you can hit that stock on the heel and it'll take a lot. It'll take a lot to break that stock. So when we thump that stock. Yeah, so we have uh, tapped on this receiver onto this stock and then we're gonna look at the inletting. Well, look how black that is in these uh, flat surfaces right here. Just what you want. Here's what you don't want, and we're good. Around this radius area here, you see there's very little uh, black uh, inletting black. That's what you that's what you gotta have. You don't want it bearing on there. You want that to be cleared in there. And I look down inside my stock, and it's just a little bit of black right on the back of this radius area in here where this uh, uh, receiver is bearing that we talked about. This little um, I call it a little recoil plate right here. That's bearing just so this stock is really about perfect. It's just and these Japanese stocks once you get that get that finish scraped out of there It will um, they generally fit really well now as we drive this stock on We got a good fit all the way around it looks really good now If you can look down in this hole, and I don't know if this camera will pick this up but There's um there's wood in this hole, and you see that that wood's kind of interfering. This hole is too far to the rear. That's done intentionally at the factory because now you have to do the real critical part of fitting this, uh, getting this hole where you want it. Now, you at home will probably be using a rat tail file, and you take the stock off, and you start bringing forward <clears throat> this hole right here you start rasping now be careful don't go all the way through and hit your uh, radius area your tang area here so be careful you're gonna you're gonna start very carefully bringing this removing wood at the front of the hole like so now what that will do and I got inletting black all over my camera I think but that's okay uh, what that will do um, it, you'll slowly work it forward now you want that your tang screw to really go in there very tight and that draws that stock up against that receiver. Now, we cheat around here and we have this special reamer that we use a lot around here. It's got a radius out on the end. It's uh, just a little uh, 
hand reamer that we've made up. And we our salesmen, as we cheat, we run this reamer in here. And uh, that clears out the wood. It makes this a lot easier and they come out perfect. So when you buy a prefit stock from me, I've kind of done it like this, and the hole about just about be perfect. And when I run this in all the way, this ball area will hit in the uh, screw recess and uh, straighten it up. And you have to kind of bear down hard. You don't want to go too deep. There it just went. There's a collar on this, uh, a shoulder on this reamer, so I know about how deep to go. You don't want to go too deep or you'll cut your threads out. Now, I have uh, run that, that reamer to the right depth and clear that hole out real good there again you'll be doing this with a rat tail file now we're going to try our tang screw and i've got an old bird up tang screw here we're going to uh, and i like to put it in a vise because it's going to be pretty tight at least i want it to be tight let's see how it comes out this is a terrible screw oh yeah that's feeling right that screw is going in really tight I'm really having to work to get that in there. That's the way I want it. I want that screw to draw that stock up tight. And that reamer and all makes it perfect. Now, that screw started. I'm not gonna put it in all the way. It's a terrible screw, it's all burned up. We're not gonna leave that in there, but it has pulled that stock up really tight against that receiver. And that will keep it from cracking. Now, I wanna show you one other thing. If you're fitting this wood to an older style gun, an old standard 12 or the likes, uh, they have what we call a shallow tang. Let me show you the difference between a deep, what we call a deep tang and a shallow tang. And uh, let's screw out. Let's remove the stock. Now, I'll let in letting black on here. I'm going to get rid of or I'll be wearing it. Now, this stock is a later model light 12. So it has a deep tang. Now here's what we're talking about the, the, when I say a deep tang. We're talking about the thickness of this tang right here. This is the later model deep tang. Let me show you a shallow tang. <clears throat> this is a shallow tang. It's thinner in through here. See the difference? See if I can kind of get them here where you can compare them. Deep tang, shallow tang. Um, now here's the, all these Japanese stocks are set up for the new models, the newer guns, the deep tangs. Now, if you're fitting a, uh, an older a stock to an older gun, like an old uh, standard 12 like this uh, here, this is an early light 12, but it's got the shallow tang. Now what you have to do, if you don't put a shim in the bottom of this stock and you put it on the gun, everything will go on pretty well and fit well, but when you tighten your screw, it'll pull this tang way down deep into the wood and it'll look really bad so what you have to do like they do at brownie they uh they make a little shim just like this right here and how thick is that shim oh 16th of an inch or so around there's about doesn't have to be perfect and they will glue in that shim in the bottom of this inlaying what you do put some super glue on it then you stick your receiver up on there and it'll push that down in place and it'll hold it in there now, I've got one here that uh, has already uh, has a shim glued in there. So all you really have to do is uh, kind of knock a hole in uh, that shim area. And uh, I'm gonna go with this, uh, just something to kind of knock. There's my hole, there it is. So we have the shim glued in the bottom here now. now when I put a shallow tang gun on there now, shallow tang, like this old early light 12, it will lift this tang up out of the wood where it belongs. And uh, as you can see, this tang is about flush with the top of that, uh, with the top of the wood. They're, they're real, it's a good fit. So the thickness you need, as I say, is about, oh, a 16th of an inch or so. There. And the shim will look kind of like this imperative that you glue that in there on a shallow tang model now also something if you fit one of these stocks on a real early standard 12 the receivers were shaped a little differently in this area and so your wood japanese wood is going to be a little proud right in this area here uh it's going to protrude your wood is going to protrude up you're going to have a little more of a lip here you'll feel 
doesn't hurt anything. If you don't make that perfect, you have to dress it down to the receiver, but then you get into a refinish and all. And um, you can do that if you if it really bothers you. But so that's basically all you have to know to fit one. Um, like I say, uh, there's uh, just be looking for this uh, depth of the tang. This is a shallow tang, and this is a deep tang. You can see the thickness, the difference here. So that's really all you have to do to fit one of these stocks. There again, just go at it slowly and uh, get that finish out. Look at this great fit we've got on this. Uh, see all that black area? That's perfect. And uh, where you don't want a, where you don't want this uh, metal bearing is in this um, this area right uh, at the end of the tang here. You don't want it bearing real hard there, or it'll crack. You don't want it bearing real hard here because that'll crack, <clears throat> make it crack. And critical, as I say, that you get this finish out of this radius area right here. If you drive that stock on there and you see this real heavy black there is really buried, get your little rasp out and remove some more wood to get that clear because it will crack it right through there. I can tell you from personal experience I've done it. So that's really all you have to do to fit a set of that Japanese wood. So it takes a little time. If you go at it slowly, you can do it. Uh, we charge a little extra if you want to buy one that's already been pre-fit. And if you buy one that's been pre-fit, it should pretty much just bolt right on. So that's all it takes really to fit a set of Japanese wood.